Hello everyone. Today we shall talk about the two topics. The first one is the how a stone columns are constructed and how we can determine the bearing capacity of a stone columns. So let us begin. At the time of construction of a stone columns, what we used to do? We used the a spiral auger for making a bore holes. We can see in this method, the bore hole is made by a spiral auger and the bore hole is cleaned manually by using a special made tools. Once hole is made or it is cleaned, then what we used to do? Granule piles are cast using 20 to 30 mm size stone aggregate along with 20 to 25 percent of sand having uniformity coefficient of 2. As we know, for the coarse grain soil, whenever we draw the particle size distribution curve, we can determine the coefficient of uniformity that is equal to D60 by D10. So, next what we have to do, the aggregate and sand layers are placed alternatively. For the construction of a stone column, first we put the aggregate, Above that, we put the layers of sand, sand alternatively with layer thickness which varies from 300 to 500 millimeter and 50 to 100 millimeter respectively. That means the layer of the aggregate will vary from 30 centimeter to 50 centimeter, whereas the layers of sand above the aggregate will vary from 5 to 10 centimeters. Then once these two layers are put, each two layer unit that is nothing but aggregate and sand is compacted with the help of a cast iron hammer of weight 1250 kilonewton with a free fall height of 750 millimeters. Due to the impact of hammer, the sand fills the voids of stone aggregate followed by the lateral and downward displacement. The two things are going to happen once we use the cast iron hammer. Definitely in the whole horizontal displacement that is lateral displacements will also will take place as well as the downward movement will also take place and we achieve the full compactions. We can see the figure it is, it is clarified uh, uh, once again by giving the figure itself. You can see the first figure making a borehole. First we have to use, uh, by using a spiral auger, we can make a borehole. Once we make a borehole, then the next step comes. Uh, at the bottom of the boreholes, we put the stone aggregate, which varies from 30 to 50 cm size. Above that, we shall put the sand layers. That is nothing but 5 to 10 centimeters. Once uh, it is uh, placed inside the hole, then we use the cast iron hammer for compaction. You can see here in the third figure, the, the, it is uh, compacted, right? And once it is compacted, the first layer is compacted. Then the next steps we follow, that means pouring of the material, pouring of the aggregates and the, again the sand next layer we shall go for the next layer second layer and once we put the second layer then using the cast iron hammer it is compacted so likewise the process is repeated till we achieve the a stone column right up to the ground level right so this is a, a, about the construction of a stone column now we can see How we can how we can uh, uh, determine the bearing capacity of a stone column? So for this, Bowles 96, uh, 96, uh, 96 give an approximate formula for the allowable bearing capacity of the stone column. You have to note down here he has given uh, they have uh, he has given the formula uh, for allowable bearing capacity. So what formula he has given, allowed bearing capacity 
is kp by factor of safety into 4c plus sigma dash r right so kp is nothing but it is the passive work pressure coefficient which is equal to tan square 45 plus 5 dash by 2 we have already studied in earth pressure chapter how we can calculate the passive earth pressures and active earth pressure co coefficient so phi dash is nothing but drain angle of frictions of a stone right whatever the ag aggregates you are going to use c is the either drained cohesion suggested for large area or the undrained shear strain cu undrained cohesion and sigma dash r is equal to effective radial stress which is measured by using the pressure meter suppose pressure meter is not available in that case sigma dash r we can take directly equal to 2c factor of safety varies from 1.5 to 2 so suppose you want to calculate the allowable load allowable load is nothing but allowable bearing capacity multiply by the cross section area of the stone column so that was the first formula now we shall see the second formula given by Bosida et al 1995 he they developed the formula for the group of stone columns right and we have also studied in a case of settlement of a stone column that ratio between the total cross section area of enforcement by and the footing area is known as area replacement ratio they have used the Bosida et al have, have used the area replacement ratio in their formula to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity you can see here they have used the uh, they have calculated the ultimate bearing capacity so ultimate bearing capacity q ultimate is equal to 4c plus 2 as into c into kp minus 2 plus cs square root of kp where area replacement ratio, uh, ratio as is equal to ns pi d square by af ns is nothing but number of stone columns right and d is the diameter of a stone column cs is the cohesion of granule pile materials kpc is the passive earth pressure coefficient and af is nothing but area of the footing area of the footing a footing area right so this that was the second formula by which we can calculate the ultimate bearing capacity now the, let us see the third formula which was also developed by the different researchers to estimate the ultimate bearing capacity of floating stone columns groups here you can see they have written the floating stone floating stone is nothing but is the friction stone column also we can say right uh, it is uh, not the end bearing column so an equation are developed by Fatah et al 2017 what they have done for this floating stone columns were installed in different clays they carried out various experiments in different types of clay soil and under cohesion of those clay materials varies from 4 kpa kilopascal to 25 kpa length to diameter ratio of the stone column also varies in different soils different clay soils and the stone columns were constructed by kist bore methods so as the experimental data generated by the the present studies whatever the study the, the fatah et all carried out and they have also taken the data from the previous uh, studies which were done which were conducted by the other researchers so both data you are mixed together and after that using the spss so software statistical package for social sciences they develop the equations right so this is the reference of the Fatah et al. Now we can see this, this equation was developed by Fatah et al. Ultimate bearing capacity 15.34 Cu is the undrained cohesion to the power 0.401. As is nothing but area replacement ratio. As to the power 0.266. Ns is nothing but number of stone columns to the power 0.084. L by D is the, the length diameter ratio so what we see, saw here cohesion undrained co uh, shear strength that is the nothing but undrained cohesion 
in kilopascal, area replacement ratio, number of stone columns, L by D is the length to diameter ratio. So, this is all about the today topic. Thank you.